Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival here in downtown Detroit. Making and blessing the stage in a rare appearance here in Detroit, Michigan is saxophonist Jerry Braganzi. As you might know, Jerry has a very, very strong following overseas, as well as he's one of the most in-demand clinicians as well as instructors. Tonight he's going to be performing selections off his brand new Savant Records release, Shifting Gears, and features Mr. Bruce Barth on piano, who's going to also bless the stage with Jerry. We sat down earlier and talked about the brand new record. We also talked about his improvisation series. He's the author of two series called Inside Improvisation as well as Sound Advice, where he kind of teaches the important lessons of the art of playing the saxophone and also music. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of Mr. Jerry Braganzi live here at this year's 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival here in Detroit, Michigan. Congratulations on your latest Savant Records release, Shifting Gears. You've got uh, a very, I, I love Bruce Barth, he's your pianist on this record, and it seems like the compositions, again, are just moving forward like you always do. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I, Bruce is outstanding on the record, and I have a, a whole bunch of new tunes, and I write a lot, you know, it keeps me from getting bored, keeps me out of trouble, you know, so... Uh, it's it's nice to have a band that as soon as you write the tunes they can play them. It's really it was a lot of fun to do that. And we have another one coming out that we did in in two days. We have shifting gears and another one will come out called Rigamarole. It was on the same recording date. What is it about your compositions and composing? Because there's something to say. Because when you teach, you're a clinician, and one of the things that you stress is the art of writing and composing. I think uh, a lot of times when you write a tune, it, it, you're writing in a direction, so it's a direction you're going in. And uh, you, you write the tune and then you learn how to play on it. You, you learn the direction and the style that you want to play on that tune. So 
that's the thing that I like about writing. I'm writing tunes in the direction I want to play. What do you get, or where do you get your muse for writing? What are some of the things that you think about when you are writing a ballad or you're writing one of your kind of out there compositions? Uh, well, you know, I'll take a little, uh, an idea that I could have heard somewhere. It could be on any record or from, even from a student or uh, something that's in my imagination. I'll just take this idea and, and I'll just, I, I, I don't write near, on the piano because then I would get too bogged down with, oh, I could do it this way, I could do it that way. So I just sit down and I, I write the tune out. And I don't labor over it because if I labor over it, it would, I'll end up taking six months to write a tune and, and end up not liking it after all. So I just kind of write them down and, and, you know, and they're like little improvisations for me. So that's the way I think of them. I don't labor over them or that kind of thing. I read an interview with you. It was interesting that you, there, there are times where you write so much that you just write. Sometimes you just forget about everything else and just, just write, write, and write. Yeah, when I'm on the road, which is quite a bit, I'm in my hotel room. There's nothing to do. I don't watch TV. And, you know, I read books and things like that. So I just open up my music book and I just write tunes and uh, having done it enough it, it, it's become easy for me just kind of write them down and um, and then I'll, I'll bring them I have two steady nights in Boston on a, a Monday and a Wednesday I just bring them by and, and we play them so that's the beauty of it um, and then I, I I might tweak them after me and say yeah you know what I think I'm going to leave this note out uh, I'm going to change this chord right here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But, you know, the basic idea, I just write it out and hope for the best. Some of them work. Some of them don't.
you grew up in Boston and you're still living in Boston and it's kind of funny how you begin your career started there you left and it's pretty much come full circle explain some of your origins of how you got into jazz well um, I don't know why but for some reason when I was eight years old and I had a clarinet and I got an alto when I was 11, but right from the beginning I was listening to, my uncle upstairs was, was a jazz musician, so I was listening to Count Basie, Duke Ellington, Lester Young, and then when I was uh, 12 years old, a friend came over to my house, and he had a Miles Davis record with Coltrane, and our Blakey record with Wayne Shorter, or Sonny Rollins record, and I was hooked. And then by the time I was in the... the uh, Ninth grade, I switched to tenor saxophone from the alto, but it it just that was the only music I ever listened to in my house. It's, it's the only music they played, so I don't know why it happened. I guess I was just for me, I'm I'm lucky. You know, your style is very unique, but you one of your main influences is the drummer Elvin Jones. That's true. I mean, when I was a kid, I'd uh, he's from Detroit, right? <laughs> So I would go out in t to Harvard Square from Watertown, which is where I, I grew up, which is a little outside of Boston. Go to Harvard Square once every other week and get a stack of records and go into these listening booths and listen to them. And the records that I'd always fall in love with, any record that had Elvin on, I bought. And I just adored the way he uh, plays and his whole concept. And, well, you, you don't have to say anything. It's Elvin Jones, you know. He's, he's the man. How has he influenced your music and your playing style? Well, you know his poly, his poly rhythms, his 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 beat, that that whole organic thing that he does, Mother Earth, you know, and all the records that he plays on, everybody plays different, and uh, yeah, it's 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 had a profound effect on me. And, and I practice drums, and, uh, you know, I play the drums, and I practice them, and I play with my students and things like that. So uh, it's a work in progress. Tell me about your experience. You, you, when you finished college, you decided that you were going to make your foray and leap into the New York music scene, and one of your roommates happens to be a jazz musician, one of your contemporaries. Well... Um, when I first moved to New York, um, my roommate was Harvey Swartz, or Harvey S., I believe he calls himself now. And uh, it was fantastic. You know, you, you room with a bass player, and they're always getting all kinds of work because everybody needs a bass player, especially a good one. So he's getting calls all the time, and he'd say, Hey, man, you need a, you need a tenor player? You want to use it? You know, uh, you, want, you need a tenor player? And he'd be hooking me up with this, or, or even playing sessions. We'd play sessions all the time. And right before I moved to New York, I was playing bass five, six nights a week. And that's how I saved up enough money to move to New York so I could coast for a while. I left the bass at home, but uh, yeah, that's how it worked out. You know, one of your famous partnerships and your dear friendships and mentor was with the legendary Dave Brubeck. Yeah, I, I uh, played an, uh, this gig in Boston with a avant-garde band and Darius Brubeck was playing piano. So Darius, about, I don't know, four months after I moved to New York, he called me and said, yeah, I'm gonna take a band on the road with my father and uh, I'm gonna form a band and I want you to be in it. So joined his band, went on the road with Dave in that situation, like two bands, and we, I'd play first set with his son, second set with Dave, and then I didn't, Paul Desmond was, oh, Jerry Mulligan to Paul. And then I went on and we'd do a, um, you know, three, four tunes together at the end, an encore. And then that stopped, and three years later he called me up and said, I want to do a quartet, so I did that situation. And uh, it's unusual because I don't play anything like Paul Desmond. I adore Paul Desmond, you know, he's an amazing player. But Dave said, look, just play like yourself and everybody's happy. <laughs>
important things of your career is the fact that you're an instructor and a lot of your instructees, uh, instructors or teachers follow advice from a series called Inside Improvisation as well as Sound Advice. Tell me how this concept came about and why did you decide to do this and how successful are these, these videos? Well the, the videos are, are different. That's on Jazz Heaven and, and I do have a uh, one on saxophone that'll be coming out. And there's some Rico clips that are sound advice. Rico's uh, read, you know, clips. But throughout the years I've been teaching, and students would tell me, well, you should document this material because it's very helpful. It really helps me to get to the, uh, the particular... Uh, uh, theory that I'm teaching or <clears throat> system so I, I put I have seven books out they're all in advanced music um, and now I have four instructional videos out on jazz heaven and you, so it's just a it's kind of the a way to to help people uh, learn certain techniques and there's so many books out in the market today. It's hard for a musician to know which ones to get. And there's so many good ones. So, and I'm not trying to sell mine, I'm just saying it's, you pick and choose. I think that what makes you the player, what you, today is number one, who you listen to, most important. What you practice, and who you play with. So you have to be discriminating. Pick the stuff that you think is gonna help you. What's the most important thing that you're teaching your students in the New England Music Conservatory? Well, I'm always talking about time, rhythm. I have a whole class called Melodic Rhythms. Time and rhythm and uh, sound, your personal sound, articulation, uh, and listening. And of course, all the hula doulas like substitutions in uh, different uh, chord scales you can use or different uh, hexatonic uh, tri uh, triad pairs, pentatonics, 
uh, bebop scales, things like that. I teach all of that stuff, but you know, to put it all together, uh, it takes a while. You know, your career really is out there overseas. I mean, you've put a lot of time and you tour a lot overseas. What is it about that market that music fans really appreciate over there versus the time that you spend here in the United States? That's a, a, a great question. I, I asked myself that same question. I, you know, a lot of jazz musicians from the United States uh, work in Europe a lot or other countries, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, um, and th I guess their governments give money to the arts. All the jazz clubs are, are partially subsidized, the jazz festivals are subsidized, the, uh, all these little theaters, jazz, uh, you can play concerts, they get grants. It doesn't happen in the United States. Uh, and God forbid Romney's the president, it'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> What's jazz music mean to you, Jerry? Jazz music means being in the present tense. Because to play, you have to be there physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually in the now, in the present tense. Being there. And it's a language. It's a language that you speak in the present tense, that you're speaking with other people in the band. And it's, that's what it is. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at this year's 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival here in downtown Detroit. I personally like to thank Mr. Jerry Braganzi for his time, as well as the staff, management, and festival organizers who put on this year's 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time. Peace.